Hello and welcome to Multiframe Webinar 2, Video 5 on Working with Properties. Our next member property that we're going to take a look at is the orientation of the member. The normal way to do this is just by typing in an angle, and that's the angle between the web of the member and a vertical plane passing through the ends of the member. So that's pretty straightforward. But we also have some utility functions on the right hand side of the member orientation dialog that allows us to use some advanced methods for setting the orientation. One option is that we can choose a node as a reference point and then set up the orientation so that the plane of the web or the plane of the flange passes through that node. And that's handy in situations with sloping structure and also if you have say a curve or a dome with a node at the center. We can also specify the orientation so that those planes are aligned to the global axes. This is useful in the case where the member itself is inclined and it saves us having to work out the angle to adjust the orientation to be aligned with the global planes. The alignment to a point is very similar to the alignment to a node except that we assume there isn't a node at that point, we just type in the coordinates directly. And then finally we can type in an arbitrary dx, dy, dz uh, vector orientation for the orientation. So let's go over to multi-frame. As an example, let's take a look at these rafters. Now by default the web of these rafters, uh, sorry these purlins, uh, by default the web is vertical and so we want to use our member orientation. Uh, one option is that we can just take a look at the slope of this member and we can see that it's at a slope of 11.3 degrees and so when we come to choose the orientation of our purlins we can select those purlins, choose member orientation and type in that uh, orientation directly. So that will rotate them around to the correct point. Another option however is that we can choose uh, a reference node. So if I choose this node at the end of the rafter there, I point to joint 8 is at the end of the rafter, then now I can select my purlins, choose member orientation, and this time I choose an advanced option and I say I want to align it automatically to node 8. And notice that it calculates the orientation automatically for me. I want to orientate my um, flange, so it calculates that for me. And then not only are those members correctly orientated, but if I change the slope of this beam, the orientation of these purlins will change along with it. Another non-obvious part of the member orientation is apparent if we're taking a look at members such as uh, T sections and we want to change the orientation of the T. Let me just hide these beams using the mask command. And we can see that we've got our T section here. And if we use our member orientation command, notice at the bottom left hand corner there's this option to flip the section and axes. So by default, those axes are not flipped, and you can see the flange of the T is uppermost. But if we use that option to flip it about its XX axis, this has the advantage that it does change the orientation of the section, but it leaves the local member axes in their original orientation. And that's very handy once we come to compare the bending moment diagrams and so on of the results. All of the horizontal members will still share a common member axis orientation, but the orientation of the section itself will have been flipped around. That completes our look at member orientation. Thank you for watching.